Hello friends, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Laura. This is the Last Minute Laura channel. And when you come here, you can usually find me making something or doing something crafty. Today, I am going to be making a new project. It's still a work in progress. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I've got most of the idea down and I've made one side. So I am going to show you how I made this piece. We're going to make it again because it's two pieces for the pattern in my head. And then hopefully this is gonna come together into a really pretty uh, sort of poncho shawl type thing. I have a green poncho triangle shawl video. I'll link it as well down below. So you can see I've done something sort of similar in the past, but I think this is going to be a really cool change on it. It's got a few more uh, variables than the green one that I did in the past. And I am going to show you how to size it up appropriately for you. So if you're interested in making something like this, keep watching. Also, if you are new here and you didn't know yet, you can get all of my written bullet journal pattern spreads by joining my Patreon. For two bucks a month, you get access to the group Discord, you get shout outs at the end of videos, and you get these bullet journal spreads. Now, sometimes they're written patterns like these, sometimes it's artwork, sometimes it's ideas. Basically, you get whatever projects I've got going in my head, you get access to them uh, by joining the Discord. So if that sounds up your alley, or if you just want the written pattern for this particular video, uh, check the links in the description. Okay, now let's jump in. So to get started on this project, you're going to need a five millimeter crochet hook. You're also going to need some yarn. I'm using this, I'm gonna say it's about a worsted weight. Some of that yarn, I don't even think you're gonna need 100 grams total for this project, but maybe I will let you know towards the end of the project once I've measured it out. You'll need a yarn needle to weave your ends in and a pair of scissors to cut your yarn at certain points. But the main thing, you need your yarn, you need your crochet hook. Okay, so to begin, I am starting with the red heathered yarn. I'm gonna start with a slip knot, like every time. And then I am going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then I'll slip stitch to that first chain to create a round. Now you've got a little circle there. Now I'm gonna chain three. One, two, and three. Then I'm going to double crochet two times into that round that we made with the chain four. So there's one. And there's two. That chain three at the beginning now counts as one double crochet. Now I'm gonna chain three. One, two, three. And now I'm going to do three more double crochets into that same hole in the middle there. One, two, and three. And now I am going to chain three again. One, two, and three. And now I'm gonna do three more double crochets into that center hole again. One, two, and three. And now I'm gonna chain three again. One, two, and three. And now we are going to slip stitch to the top of that first chain three. So you count them up, one, two, chain three. I'm gonna put the slip stitch into that chain three to join the round up. And now we've got a little triangle. It's very little, but that's the base of this whole project. So now to get up to the next round, we're gonna chain three, one, two, and three, and then turn the work around. And now we're gonna be working into that corner. So we're gonna start with two double crochets because we work now, from now on, we're working in groups of three double crochets. 
So since that chain three acts as a double crochet, we're gonna start by double crocheting just two times into that corner. There we go, and that makes up a double crochet uh, group of three. And now we're gonna chain three because it's like we're at the corner again. One, two, and three. And then we're gonna do three double crochets into that space again. One, two, and three. And now we're working to the next corner. So at this point, we're not working in a corner. We have to like jump to the following corner. So we need to put a space in there, but this time it's just a chain one. So after you do those two sets, you'll do a chain one, and then we're gonna put three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, all in this one space. So one, two, and three, and then chain three, one, two, three, and then double crochet three times. One, two, and three. And now we have to jump to that next corner. So we need to have at least one stitch in there. So we do a chain one, and then now we're jumping back at that corner. So we're gonna do three double crochets and then a chain three and then three double crochets all in that one space. There we go. And now we're going to be joining the triangle here between two corners. So that means we need to do a chain one and then we're gonna slip stitch to the top, oops, to the top of that chain two from the beginning of the round. Okie dokie, and now we've got a little bit of a bigger triangle, two rounds worth. And now we're on round three. For round three, we're gonna start with a chain three, one, two, and three, and then turn the work. And now I'm going to be working into this chain one space. I've already got one double crochet, that's what the chain three represents. And now we're going to double crochet two more times into that space, one and two. And now we're working between two corners, right? We're not in a corner, so chain one. We're gonna do, every time we reach a corner, we're gonna do double crochet three times, chain three, double crochet three times. Every time we reach a corner, it's gonna be the same, uh, the same stitch, which is three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. And when we're working between the corners, like between each group of three double crochet stitches, we're gonna do a chain one. And now I'm at another hole that is not a corner, so I'm just gonna do three double crochets in there. One, two, and three. And then I'm gonna do a chain one because I'm not in a corner. And now I'm in a corner, so I'm going to do three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. And I'm just gonna repeat that all the way around until I make it back to the beginning of this round. All right, and now I'm back at the beginning of the round. So I'm gonna slip stitch the round together and then I'll chain three, one, two, and three. And now you can see the triangle, you can see the, uh, the pattern we're gonna follow for the next few rounds. Every time we get to a space that is just a chain one, we're gonna be putting, um, three double crochets in there. And when we get to the chain three spaces, we're gonna be doing three double crochet, three chain, three double crochet. And we're just gonna do that to grow this triangle out all the way until, for me, it's going to be row number 13 where I finish this. But for you, it might be a different row. And here's why. You want these triangles to reach to the edges of your shoulder. So measure from one shoulder tip to the other shoulder tip, just across your collarbone. And whatever that measurement is, that's when you wanna stop doing your rounds, when you get to that size. You can make it even bigger than that if you want to, just make a larger triangle, but do as many rounds as it takes to make sure that the triangle, the red part, will reach from corner to corner to the edges of your shoulders. So I am just going to zoom through the rest of this triangle portion because it's a, just a repeat of 
the same thing that we did for the first few rounds. I'm just going to keep doing that all the way until my triangle measures from shoulder tip to shoulder tip. So for me, again, that is going to be 13 rounds. I'll see you then. All right, so here I am just finishing up round number 13. You can see for round number 13, I switched to the dark blue and I think it makes for a cute look. And now what we're gonna do is work up the shoulder shaping. We've got the final triangle part done. We just need to do shoulder shaping. At this point, the distance from the middle out to one of the tips of the corners for me is about nine and a half inches. And the size of the whole triangle is about 14 and a half, 15 inches each side. So, now we're going to be working on, like I said, the shoulder shaping. First things first, count in. You wanna make sure that we're going to mark out the center of that triangle. So these two chain one spaces are going to be where we start, where we have our shoulder shaping beginning from. So we're gonna start this round, well, now it's a row. We're gonna start this row of shoulder shaping by chaining up two, one and two. And then we're going to do two more double crochets into that chain one space, one and two. And then we're going to follow the same pattern, but we're gonna make it just up to the corner. So I'm going to just do three double crochets in each one of these chain one spaces uh, with a chain one in between those sets. So chain one and then double crochet three times in the next chain one space. And I'm gonna make it up to the corner, but in the corner, instead of going around the corner, doing our three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, we wanna keep that shoulder straight now. So we're just going to put two double crochets into that corner, just two double crochets, no chain anything. And I'll show you that right when I get up to the end of this first row of the shoulder shaping here. So at this corner, we're only gonna be doing two double crochets in there. So there's one and there's two. And now we're going to bring up the row. So we're gonna do chain two, one and two, and then turn. And now we're gonna be working back across instead of around, which is what we've been doing. We're going to start first by putting three double crochets into this chain one space. So one, two, and three. And then we're going to chain one and double crochet three times into that next chain stitch. What we're gonna do though, instead of going all the way to the end of the row, we're going to stop at this last chain one space. That's gonna create this stair step ladder sort of decrease. So we're going to stop with three double crochets in that last chain one space. All right, and now you can see that little decrease we've got started here. The first round, row, second row. And now what we're gonna do, we've gotta make our way over to this chain one, but we don't wanna create any extra stitches before that. So we're gonna slip stitch. So just turn the work around and then we're gonna slip stitch into that first double crochet and the second double crochet and the third double crochet. And then slip stitch into the chain one space. From there, you can chain two, and now we are working into that chain one space with two more double crochets. And then you can see that decrease continues without adding any stitches in between there. So I'm gonna do the same repeat all the way across until I get to the end of this row. And we're gonna finish this end of this row the same way we did when we were working this way on the previous row. We're gonna finish with two double crochets in the corner. All right, back at that corner. So I'm gonna put two double crochets in there. One and two. And then I'm gonna chain two and turn. We're gonna do this next row. So we're now on row number 
one, two, three. We're on row number three. We're going to double crochet three in each chain one space, just the same pattern up until that last chain one space. And then we're gonna do the same thing we did for the previous round, uh, sorry, the previous row where we slip stitch into the first um, three stitches. So I'm gonna continue in the exact same repeat until row number six. I'm on row number four right now. I'm slip stitching to get to the chain one space so that I don't add any stitches there. And then I'm gonna start with a chain two and then work in the same repeat across. I'm gonna do that until I hit row number six and that is where my decreases are going to end. If you want your shoulder to be a little more narrow, uh, that's totally okay. You can decrease for a few more rows if you'd like. Uh, my decreases bring me to about four inches of uh, width for that shoulder fabric. So if you want to make yours just like mine, then decrease around until you get to row six. I will meet you back here when I finish with my decreases on this shoulder. So I've made it through my six rows of decreases for the one shoulder. You can see by putting our two double crochets at the end of the flat row, we've kept that row nice and straight. And by doing the slip stitches at the beginning of every other row, we've kept the decrease nice and straight as well. So now for row number seven, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain up two, and then I'm gonna just do a row of double crochet just across. That'll put, make putting the shoulder seam together a little bit easier for me. So I'm gonna skip that first chain stitch, not do a double crochet in there, but I will do a double crochet in the next stitch and then in every stitch across. So that's one in every double crochet and one in every chain stitch all the way across. And this is just to create an easier base when I'm sewing together the final piece. You could do a row of single crochet, a row of slip stitches, a row of half double crochet, just something to um, add a little bit more structure for when you're actually putting the shoulders together because that area is gonna get a lot of um, tugging, you know, that's an area of clothing that you'd like to have some good structure in, your seams. All right, so there are my last stitches. I'm just gonna put two double crochets in the corner to keep that straight line going. And then I'm going to pull a loop through and tie my yarn off. You can weave in your ends now if you want. I'm gonna do it after the fact. Now we have to do the other shoulder. Okay, so for row one of the first shoulder, we were working um, across this way. So I'm going to attach my yarn here and continue working across that way, uh, just in order to keep the lines of the crochet stitches looking the same so it doesn't show or look obvious that I've uh, had to reattach yarn here. So I'm gonna start by pulling up a loop and then I'm gonna chain two, one and two. And I'm going to just in that middle stitch, I'll put in my two double crochets and chain one. And then I'm going to repeat the pattern of three double crochets in each chain one stitch and then chain one in between those sets of three until I reach the corner. And at this corner, I'm gonna do what I did at the other corner. So that is two double crochets into the corner stitch. And then I'm gonna chain two and turn it around. So I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay, so here I am at the corner. I'm gonna do two double crochets in that corner. And then chain two and turn. and I'm gonna follow the exact thing that I did for the other shoulder. I'm just gonna be doing it on the this side, uh, but I'm going to start with three double crochets in that chain one space. I'm gonna do three double crochets in each chain one space across, but I'm going to stop after the last uh, chain one space, and we're gonna do the slip stitches in order to bring our work over. I'll show you what I mean again when I get to the end of this row. All right, so here I am at the end of the row. I'm gonna do my last three double crochets here. And then I'm not gonna chain one, I'm just gonna turn it around. 
And I'm gonna slip stitch into those three double crochet stitches uh, just to bring the working yarn over to that chain one space. And then I will chain two and add two more double crochets into that chain one space. And then I'm gonna just repeat the pattern across of three double crochets in each chain one space, separated by a chain one. I'm gonna repeat these decreases again until I hit row number six, and I'm going to do a row for row number seven of double crochets all the way across. And I will meet you back when I finish my second shoulder. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna pull a loop through and then I will weave in my ends later. But let's do some measuring so I can tell you about how tall the shoulder is on mine. So from the middle, from the end to the middle, it is about seven inches, seven and a half inches, about 18 centimeters. And then from the edge of the triangle up to the top of the shoulder is about 10 centimeters or four inches and it's about four, four and a half inches across for each shoulder piece there. So uh, for this project, you need two. I've already made two, so here we go. Now it's time to actually put it together and then handle putting some uh, finishing touches on this thing. So we're gonna start by lining up the front and back piece, they are identical. And then I left a big long tail on one of mine so that we could crochet it together instead of having to sew it together. I thought it would be nice to leave the tail on and do some crocheting to put it together. So I'm gonna put my hook through the fir first stitch on both pieces. And then with the long tail, I'm gonna yarn over, pull up a loop, and then I'm gonna chain one. And now I'm going to single crochet the fabric together all the way across with that working yarn. I'm gonna try and just cover up that other tail with my single crochets, but I'm just gonna single crochet through the tops of both sides and create the shoulder seam all the way across that way. And there we go. Now those are stuck together. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is crocheting down to get a neckline, but I think I'll do that after the fact. So I'm gonna pull my loop through here, break my yarn off, and now I've got a nice shoulder seam here, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And there we go, pull through a loop to close that. Then we'll weave in those ends as well. And now we've got our poncho together. You can see now our shoulder seams are together. When we turn it out, it looks nice and adorable, honestly. Um, but I do think we should add a little bit of a neckline here just because it'll, you know, finish things up, make it look a little bit more polished and complete. And for that, I am going to begin right after the seam here. I'm going to just pull up a loop and chain one and then chain two. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double crochet until I reach that chain one space. I'm going to just find places to put the crochets until I reach that point. So I'll put one right here. So I put one through the double crochet from that first row and now I'm going to put one through the double crochet for the next row. And then in that chain one space, I'm gonna do two double crochets. One and two. And then I'm going to put one double crochet into this double crochet row. And then I'm gonna put two double crochets into that chain one space. One and two. And then I'll put one double crochet into this double crochet row here. And then two double crochets into that chain one space. And here, I will spread this out so you can see what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to create 
a more straight neckline. So these decreases are jagged. We don't want that. So in these spaces where the decrease, let me grab my hook. In these spaces where there's this big cutout, that's where I'm putting the two double crochets. And then I'm grabbing this, this stitch, the first stitch of each row and putting one double crochet here. So it's one double crochet here, two double crochets here. One double crochet here, two double crochets here. One double crochet here. And then we're gonna do a double crochet, a double crochet in those middle stitches. And then we'll do a double crochet here, two double crochets here. And I'm gonna do that all the way around in order to create a more softened, rounded neckline. So if my instructions didn't make sense before, I hope that cleared it up, what I'm trying to get done here. One, two, and three. All right, so I made it all the way around with double crochets. And now you can see the neckline is much softer, has a cute look to it. And I'm just gonna pull a loop through, pull it through, and then I will weave that end in. Now it's like a very cute little poncho. So now if you want to, you can go around that neckline a couple more times. I think I'm going to go around it one time or maybe two times with the red just to create something a little bit even more finished. Uh, this time though, what I'm going to do uh, with the red is I am going to do single crochets. So I'm gonna do a round of single crochets and then a round of slip stitches in the red. And that is going to just draw everything in just a little bit more and create, I think, a really nice finished product. So I'm going to do that, uh, but you can feel free to skip this if you don't want to do it. And you can also uh, continue and do a ripped stitch for the neck, or you could do a whole bunch more rows of single crochet and create a really wide turtleneck. You've got lots of options here. This is just kind of a base triangular poncho pattern. And I think it's really uh, gonna be easy for you to make changes to it to add maybe some embroidery on it or change up the color scheme and get a completely different look than what I'm getting here. But I'm going to do what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna zoom through this single crochet and slip stitch row, round rather. Um, and when I get back to the beginning, I will show you what this is looking like and what I think I'm gonna do uh, to the outside just to finish it all the way off. All right, so here is the almost finished shield my heart poncho. I thought it kind of looked like a shield um, when I made the first triangle. And then when I added the shoulder bits, I thought it was a heart. So I thought that was a cute name for it. Um, but for the last step, we're going to add some tassels. So to do that, we're going to need a bunch of pieces of yarn that are all the same length. I am going to do that by wrapping it around, I'll use my book. I'm just gonna wrap yarn around my book until there's no yarn left. And there we go. Now I need some scissors. And now I will make individual tassels. So I think I'll do five yarns per tassel. All right, so to do the tassels that I'm gonna do, I am just going to put my hook into the large chain one space, and then I'm going to put all six pieces over the hook and pull it through that space. And then I'm going to create a loop I'm gonna put all of the little pieces of string through the loop and then pull that nice and tight. Ta-da! Then we've got this cute little tassel and we can trim it once we've put all the other ones on. So I know I need one for the back piece. I'm gonna zoom through putting these tassels on because it's the same thing. I'm gonna just pull my loop, pull a loop through with my 
cut pieces of yarn. Alternatively, if the hole is big enough, you could just put the yarn through the big hole and then make a loop, pass the tails into the loop and then pull the tails nice and tight. I think I'm just gonna do a couple of this tassel style um, towards the end. So skip one, skip two, and on the third one, I think that's a good idea. There we go. I think that's good. I don't think we need to go all the way up. I think that would be overkill. So I think I'm going to chop these side ones a little bit shorter, but I think I'll keep the bottom one nice and long. There we go. Ta-da! All right, all the ends have been woven in. The little tassels have been added. Let me show you these close up. So I've got these cute little tassels just on the bottom triangles. But what do you think? Isn't this cute? I love adding the slip stitch around the neckline. I feel like it does a little something. It thickens it up, but it also adds this like beautiful little texture around the neckline. And I think that was a great addition. I think that that made it look a little bit more complete, I wanna say. And I love these two colors together. I think they look great. And I think that the Shield My Heart pattern is complete. So this poncho, took me maybe an hour. I mean, I had to take longer because I was filming shots, but I think you could probably get this poncho done in a day easy. It's just two triangles and then you add a little bit of shoulder shaping, but it's nothing too difficult, nothing you can't handle. So I really recommend giving this one a shot. I will show you what it looks like now on um, because I think that will help you understand it a little bit better. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think about this really cute little poncho pattern. It's a super easy, uh, a quick make, I think. It's using that sort of granny square technique for the triangles. It's gappy, but it's wool, so it's gonna be nice and warm. This is kind of like a, if you're not someone who really loves wearing scarves, this is a great option to just sort of warm up the middle part of your body without having to have a big bulky scarf on. It's easy and cozy and cute. and. I bet you could even wear it sideways. But let me know what you think in the comments down below if you liked this, if you're gonna make it. If you do make it, definitely send me a photo. But hey, that's it for today, friends. But I will see you next week uh, for another tutorial. Definitely come back, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and don't forget to like the video if you liked it so that the algorithm gods share it with more people. Anyway, friends, thank you so much for watching, and like I said, I'll see you next time. Bye.